What's up, YouTube? Jason Ritchie coming at you from the COVID couch. I'm on an A harmonica, the same one I did last Friday on a Joel Anderson Mooncat special. It was one of the nicest little gifts I've ever got. And uh, yeah, I'm down with the beer bug. And uh, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, Jay, don't worry about it. We don't. We don't need a video for Free Friday. But when I say no matter what, I mean no matter what. I mean, unless I can't make the video or somebody can't film me, if I, you know, I'm going to make the video. Might not be the best video I've ever made. It might be a video that's kind of uh, tainted by COVID. <laughs> but here we go, right? No editing. There's not going to be any tab right now. Just turn it off. Just turn it off right now. You don't need to see this video. It's not going to help you. Or maybe it will be the best video I ever made. A lot of people had ideas for the video. Some people said, Jay, don't make the video. You're sick. Chill out. Relax. Other people said, I got all kinds of ideas for you, Jay. This is what you need to do. But we're going to make the video because you know what? It's going to be another great day. That's what Lee Mac 912 says. My favorite cigar reviewer on the net. He's much more than a cigar reviewer. And sometimes, you know, I try to be much more than a harmonica player. But you know what? Harmonica music, it's important. It makes you feel good. But you know, it's not that important. You know, my AA sponsor, I'm not supposed to say that. Delete that. You never heard that. Uh, strike that from the testimony. The jurors, you didn't hear that. That cannot apply in a court of law. He always used to say to me, he'd say, you know, Jay, you're no more important than the trash man. And I'd say, what do you mean, man? And he'd say, bro, what happens if you don't play? I said, I don't know. He goes, well, what happens if the trash man doesn't come? And I said, well... I don't know. He said, well, think about it. And I said, okay, well, I guess it would smell bad. He said, yeah, it'd smell real bad. Why is that? I said, because food would be rotten and trash would be there. He goes, what happens when food rots and stuff? I said, I guess you get flies. And he goes, what happens when flies come? I said, I guess you get diseases. He goes, yeah, what else? I said, well, you probably some rats would come. So you got rats, diseases, flies. <laughs> That's what happens when the trash doesn't come. So what happened if I didn't make a free Friday video? Not too much, but guess what? I can do it. So here I am, and here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. All right. So funny enough, that little song there I'm playing is the beginning of a song. Uh, called Indian Red. So uh, I got this uh, email from a student of mine, Paul, and he wanted to know what the blues is. What is the blues? So this is a, a loaded question. My wife heard that, that he made a, a recording of himself, and my, my wife uh, listened to the recording, and she said to me, you don't need to answer that question. What is he trying to get you killed? <laughs> because it's a loaded question nowadays. So anyway, Paul, you know, he wrote, I mean, well, he recorded some things that he thought the blues might be. And they were the kind of the things that you would read in Webster's Dictionary, right? Stuff about a 12-bar format that's filled with a one, a one chord, a four chord, a five chord, so C, let's just pretend it's in C. C would be the one, C, D, E, F, G, right? So C, F, and G in, a C, in the key is C, right? And then you make those seventh chords, you flat the seventh note of the major scale, you get a seventh chord. So you got a C7, you got C7 chord, a C, D, E, F, F7 chord, and a G7 chord. You got a bunch of seventh chords on a 1, 4, 5, and a 12 board st bar structure. Is that the blues? Well, yeah, sure it is. Uh, so if you said on the bandstand, play a blues, and that's what you got, you they wouldn't be wrong. Does that mean it's good blues? I don't know. Is the blues more than that? Yes. So he mentioned, well, 
Uh, there's a 24 bar structure and an 8 bar structure and a 16 bar structure. Actually, he didn't mention that. He said he was aware that there were some other ones. Well, those are a few. Well, then there's also a one chord structure, right? Just one chord. Just one chord. <laughs> Right, you can just do that all day long. Would that be the blues? Sure it would be. And then he said, I got another friend and I talked to him and he said the blues is a feeling, right? Uh, all right, so yeah, sure, blues is a feeling, but there's lots of feelings. Like you listen to country music, you get a feeling. You listen to, sh I listen to Dolly Parton, I get a feeling. You know what I mean? Is that blues music? I don't know. Look, let's talk about it. Okay, so first of all, that song I was playing, Indian Red. Okay, so let's get into this. This uh, this music has been influenced by all kinds of sources um, from its inception um, all the way, especially up into now, okay? But uh, when I first learned that song, I learned it from some Mardi Gras Indians. If you guys don't know what Mardi Gras Indians are, look them up, right? So, um, they were uh, some folks that uh, back in the day ran away from their slave masters into the Louisiana wilderness where they were uh, taken in by the Native Americans that lived here, or the indigenous people of this area. And... Um, they uh, they were saved, and they uh, pay homage to those uh, those uh, indigenous people by wearing and making these suits that are a tribute. And and in in the in the culture has a long history of how it helped those neighborhoods succeed, right? And uh, or in their own way. And they solved a lot of their problems that way. And they solved them on Mardi Gras Day. And other times too. And that song right there, um, it comes uh, as a triumph over uh, something horrible that happened. But the melody itself is a, um, a victory um, of the human spirit despite massive amounts of, of, of oppression. This is slowly getting closer to me. Ah! <laughs> Stand. <laughs> All right. So like, what I'm, thanks Kate. So what I'm trying to, oops. Is All it right. high up? Yeah. All there? Right. Wait, yeah, okay. Can you let it go though so I can change the angle because my face isn't getting shown anymore. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. So that, that is the blues. Okay. When, when you take something painful and you make it into something that helps other people, a thing of beauty, and that helps you in the process because as they say in that thing I'm not supposed to talk about with that guy that I wasn't supposed to mention earlier, no matter how far down the scale we have gone, we will see how our experience can benefit others. That's the blues. So I'm not happy that it happened. I'm not happy about the people that got hurt in the process, but had it not happened, I would not have the ability to tell you about it or to sing it. So when I first learned that song, My Indian Red, nobody had to tell me that maybe I shouldn't just go around playing it all the time, and maybe I shouldn't sing it at all.
And I, I, I asked permission before I posted a little clip of me playing it from one of the Mardi Gras Indians. And he said, Juwan from the Golden Eagles. And he, and he said to me, he, he said, you know, yeah, man, it's cool, you know, but thanks for asking, right? Because I have respect for what they went through, okay? I don't have knowledge of what they went through. I can read about it, but I don't, but I have respect. Now, I've been through some of my own things, in, in, including some discriminatory shit. If you, if, if, if you're all not sure about that, <laughs> Google, <laughs> Google my dad on YouTube. <laughs> all right. Or imagine what it was like to have a boyfriend for eight years, right, um, in the blues community. Um, anyway, look, Adam, Adam Gusso did tell my friend that that was uh, a, a very simplistic definition of the blues. And, and, I, and I think that I might have touched on something else, right? So, like, when I listen to Hank Williams or when I listen to Dolly Parton or, or when I even listen to War Pigs by Black Sabbath, okay, when I listen to a lot of music, I hear blues. I hear that story, that redemption story. There's another definition in, in Webster's that says it's a lily in spite of the swamp. Rhythmic lamentation, right? Those are other definitions, okay? So by that definition, the blues could be anything that has triumph over adversity, over some kind of oppression, over some kind of trouble. Even if that oppression is something that you did to yourself. I drank too much and I screwed up and I lost my girl and she's gone. And if she ever comes back, I'll never do that again. That's good. That's a good thing right there, right? So what happens if you sing those lyrics over music that isn't traditional blues. Well, first of all, let's talk about that. What the hell is traditional blues? Was there traditional blues when Little Walter recorded in 1950? Was there a word for that? When he played through an amplifier, when Muddy Waters invented electricity? Was there a word for <laughs> traditional blues? Did they say, hey, Muddy, are you playing traditional enough? How about when Big Walter Horton recorded La Cucaracha? Ba, 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 ba. Right? Did somebody write to Big Walter Horton and say, Listen, uh, Walter, all due respect, but uh, is La Cucaracha really a traditional blues song? And if so, uh, why are you recording it? And uh, no, no, no. Look, don't worry about that. I'll tell you, I've played with a lot of black musicians. And um, the reason I bring that up is because this music is their culture, okay? It comes from their culture. Was it influenced by like Jimmy Rogers, the singing breakman? Was it influenced by, by some Appalachian shit, right? Some cats? Yeah, sure. Definitely, definitely there was cross-pollination, okay? But when we think of this music, we think of black culture for a reason, right? Because that's where it sprang out of, right? So, yeah. So the first thing you have to do is respect that. And let me tell you, the people, the black people that I've played with, don't give a lot of thought to what is blues. They play music. And if you want to call it blues, that's okay. Now, I'm not talking about all black people. There's some black people that have different definitions <laughs> of what shit is. And that's because they're people, right? But like in general, like Junior Kimbrough, David Kimbrough, Big Bad Smitty, okay, Sugar Blue, Billy Branch, right? Uh, who else, right? Like oh, the, the Byron Cage, the people, uh, Jack Joshua in my band now, right? Like... Walter Wolfman Washington. Who else am I playing with? Just, there's a lot, a lot. All right, Cedric Burnside, right? All the Burnsides. R.L. Burnside, Junior Kimbrough, right? If I see one comment 
about me vaping while I'm sick. I'm deleting it. All right, this is what I get. I get to do it. And that's the blues, John Perkins. <laughs> All right, none of them, none of those people I ever mentioned ever sat there and had a conversation to me about what is and isn't blues, okay? If, you, if it's sincere and you play it from your heart and it even has the remote, most remote structure of a, a most remote homage to the structure, right? It's good. Whether it's one chord, three chords, 12 bars, 24 bars. That's, you, you're, you're good, right? So like, <laughs> I feel like, I guess there's this documentary out now called What is a Woman? And nobody can give a definition of what a woman is, right? Well, maybe I'm like, maybe this is, what is the blues? <laughs> We'll go around and ask a bunch of people and nobody can give an answer, right? Look, Adam said to, one time he gave a technical definition of the blues is the difference between major and minor. Okay, let's talk about that. Let me play you something major and then something minor. Okay, here's our tempo. One, two, three. <laughs> Right, so what's happening there, right? That is major, pretty. And then dark, minor. So what's happening, right? So I'm making a statement, something nice. And then I'm making a statement, something a little darker. I'm creating tension. We're having a conversation. It's like I'm saying, like I'm sitting on my porch, having a cigar, and... Um, and I see a woman walking down the street, or maybe a guy, and I say, hey, listen, uh, uh, how are you? And, and, and they say, uh, I'm fine. And I say, well, I've never seen you in this neighborhood before. That's pretty. And they say, oh, I just moved here. And I said, oh, that's nice. Um, you want to come and hang out? Oh, And then they say, oh, I don't know. I don't really know you too well. And I say, oh, don't worry about it. You can go on your way. I'm just, I live here. I've lived here a long time. And then I say, well, why don't you come on up and have a drink with me? And, I, and then they say, I don't know. I don't know you well enough to be drinking intoxicating substances with you, sir. And I say, oh, well, don't worry about it. You can just sit here, get out of the rain. And then they say, okay, well, I'll come on up there. And then I say, damn, you look fine. The tension between major and minor, right? What is pretty? One is pretty, one is, is dark, right? It's like a regular conversation, right? You have lifts and dips and stuff. That's life, right? That's what life is. It's ups and downs. It's yin and yang. It's good and bad and good and evil. That's what it is. Okay. So I like that definition that Adam gave because of the tension of between major and minor. If you want to give a technical definition of what blues is, I think that's the best one because that one includes emotions too. <laughs> The way those two things go back and forth between each other creates tension. That, to me, sounds like the blues. I don't care what the chord structure is, whether it's one chord, a one, four, five, a one, 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 sharp five, one, 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 two, six, five, one, seven, eight. One comment about the vaping. One. Just do one. I dare you on my free Friday. I dare dare you one comment about the vaping anyway that's what blues is right there it is that's 
What is a woman? A woman is the blues. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the blues, Jason? You can't give a, a, a definition to this without having a conversation. Yeah, I can. Right? Look, I, I gave you a bunch of definitions, okay? That's what the blues is, okay? Um, of all the artists that I mentioned, of all the black artists, the, the one that was closest to having a, a, a single definition of the blues that I, was Big Bad Smitty. And, and he would definitely tell you that it, you know, it had to do with a certain way of doing things, right? And to him, that meant Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf. <laughs> And that's a good definition too, right? I can go with that, right? I can get with that. But see now, like today, you have a whole mess of black artists, especially down here in the South, that have their own blues concerts, their own blues festivals. And um, they, uh, they have music that a lot of white people don't think is blues. <laughs> How do you like that? Right, so that's some messed up, type of thing right there, right there. That's a messed up thing. Um, anyway, I don't think uh, we should be real worried about what blues is and what blues is. I think you should worry about what the major scale is, and I think you should worry about what the blues scale is or a minor scale. And then I think you should take what's in your heart and find a way to communicate it through that. Okay, and everything else in music. Um, I believe that art imitates life, not the other way around. And um, I think, uh, you know, these statements that you have to live the blues in order to play them. I think we all live the blues to some extent. And, um, and in a typical, a typical blues song would tell you the same thing I'm about to tell you now. And that's that I have caused most of my own blues. <laughs> right? Right? Uh, that's the thing. It's my own fault, baby. Right? That's what they say. Treat me the way you want to do. You want to hear the blues? Listen to B.B. King live at the Regal. Put the, put the album on. Lie down on your own COVID couch, all right, especially if you have COVID, and, and, and just start to finish. Just play the album live at the Regal. Shut up. Don't get on your phone. Don't listen to anything. You know, if you're sober, great. Listen to it sober. If you're not, drop some acid, smoke some weed, drink some booze, whatever you have to do to get yourself into that position, right? You know, some of you might have to get into a car accident and have Live at the Regal come on while you're waiting for the ambulance in order to hear it. But I, I, I sure hope not, okay? <laughs> that album, that is it. To me, that is it. That is an inter, a cyclical interaction between a band and an audience, okay? And, 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 it's, and it's a black audience and a black band. And I'm not saying all music, all blues needs to be played by black people. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's where that was the source of it, okay? And, and when you listen to that and you see how he's David Kimbrough used to say from stage, he said, he goes, I don't know what's wrong with y'all, because if I don't feel it, you can't feel it. And I sure feel it, right? So when you give out, okay, people feel that and then it comes back. And then it comes back. And, and, and like, okay, the first blues concert I ever went to, my mother took me to see James Cotton. I was like 13, okay, in Maine, in Portland, Maine. I, I didn't know what blues was. I'll tell you what I knew. I knew that I didn't like it. And I didn't really want to be there, but it was there. I was there because my mom was bringing me there. And because I was learning harmonica, I felt like I had to be at this James Cotton show to see these old black guys play blues music, right? What the heck? I like the Misfits. I like the Pixies. I like the Replacements. I like Seven Seconds. I like Fugazi, right? This is what I like. The Sex Pistols, Ramones, all right? I didn't want to hear this, okay? But I went, okay? And the show was great, right? But at the end of the night, 
at the end of the night, um, Cotton ended, and the and the audience went crazy, and they wanted an encore. And he came out, and he did the he did that song called Black Knight, and he 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 I think he threw the microphone down on the ground, and it made this big loud noise, and then the drummer went pop, and they broke it down to almost nothing, and Cotton sang without the microphone, and he sang that song Black Knight is Falling. And uh, you, you've never heard Booker sing it, James Booker. You need to hear that too. But but uh, Cotton was singing it this night, and that's all that mattered. And um, everybody, that was a, you could couldn't talk about two different crowds: Portland, Maine, drunken fishermen, okay, and James Cotton, Chicago blues man, black blues man, a bunch of white Maine fishermen that were like, oh. Geez. We went to see James Cotton at Rules. He was really good, man. You wouldn't believe this guy playing the harmonica, right? That's what they talk like, right? Very different. And, and I'll tell you, every single bad thing that ever happened to James Cotton in his entire life had to happen so he could sing that Black Knight song like that. And you know what? Every good thing that ever happened to him had to happen so he could sing that song like that that minute. And everything bad and everything good that had ever happened to every fisherman and that little 13-year-old kid that was me had to happen so that I could hear it. So that I could hear it. That's all. Okay? That's, that is what the blues is. And ever since that, I knew that what I wanted to do. Happy Free Friday, you all. Support me on Patreon. That's why I do these videos, because people send me money on Patreon. I'm not going to lie. That's why they're every Friday and not when I feel like doing it. And if you're not on Patreon, that's fine. Somebody else is paying so you can see this. Thank you to my sponsors, Honer, Harmonicas, Blue Moon, Harmonicas. Thank you, Joel Anderson, for this harmonica. Thank you, Harp Gear Amplifiers. Thank you, Honer Harmonicas. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you all. And thank you to my brand new sponsor, Pedal Pad. They're making me a brand new pedal board, and we're going to put it up and do a review. They got bought by some new people, and they're great, and they appreciate a Mooncat, and they reached out to me. I didn't even have to reach out to them. They said, Jay, we're getting a lot of orders from you. We wanted to say thank you. Is there anything you need? I said, there's nothing I need. The other one's holding up great. They said, we're going to build you one anyway. Those are my people. Anyway, love you all. Thank you. See you next time.